Hey guys, welcome to Drum Talk, and today we're talking with Glenn Fricker of Spectra Sound Studios, yes. and uh, we'll have a link in the description for people to check out your channel. Uh, Glenn talks about all kinds of audio production stuff. Today we're going to be talking about some drum stuff. Um, you were telling me about this really cool technique that you've been using lately on snares, the way that you tune the snare. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's kind of, they're calling it the Masshoff Technique. I'm hoping I can pronounce the dude's name right. He did this video that went viral. It's over about a million views on it. It's called the Best Snare Drum Tuning Technique Ever. And I checked it out, and I thought, hey, that's really fucking cool. Um, why don't we, you know, try it in the studio, like, on a properly mic kit how, and see how it applies to me? And because that's the big thing, you know, is like, okay, how do I get rid of the ring on that snare? And his whole technique is you basically detune three lugs, but you counter it by up-tuning the three opposite lugs. That'll give you more tension on your drum. And basically it creates a ripple across the bottom of your drum, and that keeps your, uh, the, the, the snare from ringing out. So you get this amazing attack and this just nice clean um, decay on it without this horrible ring that a lot of snares are really bad for. Um, so far, I've been getting some, just some absolutely incredible results with it. It's just like, damn, that is fucking killer. So, very so, excited about that. With that, do you find that the attack sounds... Because the one thing I like about the attack of a snare drum is, is like a papery sound. I like it when it's um, sort of sharp and not like thuddy. So, what kind of uh, attack sound does that create? Is it like a papery attack, or how would you describe it? No, it's it's a it's a bit chunkier, you know what I mean, and that's the thing. I'm not, I'm totally not into the papery sound at all. You gotcha. know what I mean, like it's like everyone's like I I got away from that years ago. We're like, oh, the snare's too papery, the snare's too paper. Okay, so let's try and figure out how to get uh, much more meat on on the drum sound. So this has just got a nice solid, just solid thwack, you know. So it's more like a uh, more like a punch to the gut than than something papery. So. And awesome. that again, that, that's that's what you know, the kind of snares I'm I'm really into. So, so there you go. I mean, different strokes and all that. You know, that that's a pretty interesting technique. Do you use any other techniques, kind of more off the road than normal, to record your drums? Uh, you know, like ORTF or something that's not your typical. I'm just going to throw up a space pair kind of a thing and some uh, you know, I, I switch between ORTF and space pairs. I did ORTF for a while and I really liked it and I like space pairs. You know, it just it really depends on the drummer. Sure. You know, more than anything it's like, okay, it's like how am I gonna get the best representation of what he's playing? You know, that that kind of thing. So um I don't do anything too oddball. Like I said, I think I think the the most oddball thing I do is um, I use a couple of those really cheap Chinese uh, Large ribbon mics, you know those Apex, what are they, 120s, and they're like they're only about 300 bucks each. Yeah, and run them in a Blue Man pair out in the room, mm -hmm. and and then use uh, drum lever to actually ride that with the snare. So every time a snare hits, that'll pump the uh, pump the room mics up about 10 decibels, and then just drop them down again. Kills all the cymbal wash. It's fucking great. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that that's that's one of my one of my little little favorite tricks. And just really adds a, a nice, uh, nice depth to the to the kit overall without, you know, huge amounts of cymbal wash. So right, and I think you bring up a good point that you know there you don't need to have the most expensive mics to be able to pull off, you know, something like that. I I use you know two mics that are around the same price for doing room sounds and they sound great. Stellar CM sixes. Honestly, you know, I put my I put my fucking top of the heap U87 out of the room, and I prefer the sound of my ribbons. You know, what I mean, they just got that that really nice smooth roll off. I've got a very bright drum room, mind you. So, okay, uh, the fact that they're the not not probably the most uh, don't have the greatest fidelity uh, probably helps a little there. You know, because yeah. it just you know kind of takes the edge off uh, the drums a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. always been a a good technique. Uh, for me as well, is, is to contrast things. I always tell people, you know, if you're in a really dark room, use a really bright mic. If you're in a really bright room, use a really dark mic. Uh, yeah. and, and shoot for things like that, you know, shoot for a darker compressor or, or maybe a darker pre. Those kind of things really add up over time uh, and help, you know, get the sound to tape a little bit, a little bit further along than if you were just, you know, going raw. So I, I uh, also that's a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, when you record drums, do you keep things really raw, or do you try to process as much as you can outboard? 
Oh, let me see here. You, I don't do too much outboard processing. I mean, actually, I probably do next to none. I, I, uh, I track on the way in. You, you know, um, I try and set things up mix wise as I'm tracking. Actually, you know what I mean. It's like I'll work out of templates and whatnot. I've, I've done so many recordings in this room. Now I pretty much know what's going to work and what's not going to. So it's just a matter of you know, hook up the mic, see if it runs in, in my uh, if it runs with my normal setup. Great. If it doesn't, I can tweak a few things and go from there. But it's like I said, I've been in this room for 10, 11 years now, so I, I pretty much have a fair idea what's going to work. But yeah, everything's tracked raw right on the way in in case I need to do anything drastic to it. So you're not like you're not compressing the snare drum on the way in, or are nope. you? Nope, nope, nope. Everything's just everything's just right. And I've got a couple of really beautiful compressors too. I've tried it once, and I didn't really like the results. And then I was kind of stuck with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I'd rather just kind of get it raw on the way in, and then see what I can do with it after. And yeah. uh, you know, the thing is, there's there's such good fucking software plugins these days. Um, so, you know, it's like I find myself not even really reaching for the hardware at this point in a lot of cases. So, well, Great, great. Uh, well, then, speaking of uh, mixing-wise, uh, what are, you know, some of your techniques then that you go to in terms of processing during mixing? Okay. Uh, okay, the last time I did use... <laughs> actually, the last time I did use a hardware compressor, actually, uh, on the snare was um, when it uh, the, did that Queensryche single. And that was uh, Paul Bosta on drums. Oh my God, is that guy amazing? Still feeds up on the feeds up on the fills. <laughs> Just kidding, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, that guy had great technique. And yeah, I think we used a distressor on that. Usually, um, you know, snare drums, um, slow attack, fast release. You know, four to one, six to one. Nothing, nothing too insane. But I do like to stomp on them pretty fucking hard. And then, um, well, let's see here. Um, drum leveler is the one thing I'm using more than anything these days. Holy shit, is that ever fucking good. Yeah, I saw your video on drum leveler, and, and that's really a great plugin for anybody who's watching this. If you haven't heard of drum leveler, we'll try to uh, put a link in the description so you can check it out. It's an amazing plugin where you can actually modify the volume level of individual drum hits, and you can kind of single out the snare versus the tom versus the kick and, and get things uh, leveled out there. Yeah, that's uh, especially for doing kicks and whatnot, it's like. You know, a lot of time, you know, a few years ago, I mean, like, that would be the one element I'd replace in a mix as a kick drum and, you know, use a sampler or whatnot, probably slate number five, that kind of thing, and that's wound up on way too many records. And, and uh, when Drum Leveler came out, it's kind of like, okay, we can kind of get that kind of dynamic uh, performance, like, leveled right out just with Drum Leveler. You don't really need a sample anymore. Um, a couple tricks I do use is um, I do use a Yamaha sub kick. Okay. Uh, on the drum, so I've got I've got a bunch of things going on, and I'm going to be doing a series called How to Mix Heavy Drums eventually, um, where I we take a look at this for for doing drums. But I've got um, these days I've got three or four kick channels going on. I've got you know I've got my Audix D6, I've got my Sub Kick, um, Jackson Ward kit. He brought out like one of those Sure um, PZM mics, and those things are sure. fantastic on kick drum. So you blend that with a yeah. D6, you know you're going to get a really nice sound, and then. Um, one, one trick I, I use, and this is going back to the 80s because I'm an old bastard, and this is a trick I really like, is I will generate a, a low-frequency tone at about mm, 60, 70 hertz and then gate that off the kick. And that's just kaboom. You know, that's just just right in the fucking, right in the balls, you know. I don't know um, if you've had a chance to check out um, KickForge yet, but I will mention that it has the uh, capability of doing exactly what you just said, so... Oh, okay. It's got the got the gated sine wave. Okay, well that's yeah. very cool. I will check that out. Um, I just still have uh, unpacking it right now. So. <laughs> okay. Well, but, hey, uh, Glenn, it's been great having you. Uh, thanks for joining us on this episode of Drum Talk, and we hope to talk to you sometime soon. All right. Okay. Thanks for having me, guys. Glenn.